I promised you guys 2,000 years of Paradox Mega Campaign, and today we'll be covering the Victoria 2 part of this Mega Campaign. You can find the links to the CK3 and the EU4 previous parts in the description below. And once we get 10,000 likes, we'll switch on over to the Hoi 4 part, where we go through the Second World War, unifying the world before switching to Stellaris, and let's see what the world of Vicky 2 looks like. Politically speaking, it's pretty accurate this is exactly what we had when we finished the e4 campaign even some of the armies are actually in the exact same location where i kept them in e4 so that's a little bit surprising they're by the border as i was hoping that they would be we don't have any colonies we abandoned all of our colonies and in the new world we have a variety of nations we have quebec we have canada iroquois confederacy we can actually click on this button here and then the u.s gets cores on everything as does Canada so there you go now the US has cores on all the proper American parts I have a strong suspicion that the US is gonna play a very big part in this game and I'm actually gonna encourage them to conquer the new world so that they're gonna be the main antagonist in the next part of this saga Natchez Confederation is actually divided by the Zia Federation which took the entire province of Austin all right that's interesting so in E4 they didn't have all of this but that's fair. I guess you cannot have exactly one-to-one -one provinces in Vicky 2 since there's different province placement. South America is pretty much British South America with the big former Roman colony that is now Colombia. Florida, if you guys remember, the island colonial empire has the Caribbeans as well as Curaçao and Aruba. And we also have traces of Florida in Africa. And guess what? The Adam islands also are colonized by Florida <laughs> so essentially Florida is a true world power they're everywhere guys Tidor is pretty big also Muan Fongo is pretty big too Dungar formed this is likely one of the Tibetans that formed Dungar via the mission that they have and Japan I have to say is the closest to historically accurate borders I've seen so far obviously they didn't have Korea by this year but it's basically world war to japan with the lack of taiwan of course maybe they'll get taiwan in this playthrough you never know kamchatals are pretty big also and sadly there's no russia that would go all the way into the siberian lands but we do have ukraine which has the previous zaporozhia nation as a satellite so if you guys are new to vicky 2 there's a system here where you have sphere of influence over certain nations and then essentially you get access to all of their resources and so on also have to say that Iraq is not in the right location. <laughs> Granted, we kind of took over Iraq for ourselves. That is true. Let's see who the great powers of this game are. Obviously, we're the first one, followed by Poland, Lithuania, British Empire, Ukraine. Wait, what? France? France doesn't exist. Oh my god, where is France? Oh, dude, hold on a second. Where is France? I need to know where France is. Seriously, did, did I miss like one province that France had somewhere? Oh. <gasps> Oh my god, France is also an island nation. They got Saint Helena, and is that it? Do they have any other islands? They have a province in Africa that is occupied by rebels, and I assume these are all French colonies. Yep, we got them in uh, Micronesia. That is really weird, like there's actually proper great powers here, but the way that the system works in Viki 2, when judging what a great power is, is it takes into account industrial output, military output, and prestige. France has no industry, no military, but it does have have prestige that being said I'm pretty sure in the first 10 to 15 years we're gonna see completely different great powers and guys I just noticed something we have the Ottoman Empire in India <laughs> they have basically the Afghani slash North Indian parts here are they even Turkic culture they're a hundred percent Turkish I don't know how that happened let's take a little bit of a closer look at our Empire let's go to the nationality oh my god are you kidding me the only thing I asked for was that every province is Latin culture because I converted all of my empire to Latin and this is what I get so 
I get a different type of Latin culture. So we have Gaul culture, we have Spanish. Latin is only in the Italian peninsula, apparently. Then we have Lassun or something like that in here. Romanian and Romania, we got Assyrian, Basramani, and in all of the African parts, we have Salinatorian. And then we have Egyptian in the province of Cairo and uh, Greek in Athens, because remember, I kept them different cultures so I can take advantage of the monuments in those two provinces. So I guess we're gonna have to turn everybody into Latin by the end of this session We also do not have cores on pretty much anything. We only have cores on Italy and France We have no cores on Spain. What? Like look at this. There's no cores here. What? Let's see what reforms we have We got no reforms essentially, but we do have outlawed Slavery, which is perfect because everybody knows there was no slave ownership in the Roman Empire, right? Uh, fine, okay, we abolished it. It's been thousands of years come on and we also have access to technologies because we started in the 1836 start date ideological thought first because i really want to get more national focuses so the way the game works right now is you can assign national focuses to encourage specific things to happen in your provinces so let's say the region of provence here we can encourage certain things like immigration promote specific jobs in this particular province so we can encourage more soldiers to start popping off Encourage the production of certain factories here. You know, I finished EU4 with like a few million ducats and I start this with 50,000. Really? That seems a little bit low, man. I think I'm going to start taxing everybody in the country. There you go. Maximum taxes for everyone. Maximum tariffs on everything. And I'm going to increase the defense budget, administration, and ed education, that is. We're definitely putting to good use all of these um, taxes that we're getting from people. Looks like the party in charge is is Patriokioi, which I'm assuming is the reactionary party, but most of the country is conservative. Okay, interesting. Oh my lord, look at this, boys. Biggest producers of iron are the Empire of Ming, followed by us. So bad, man. I was really hoping that I'm the biggest producer of iron. There's a lot of iron in Poland, Lithuania, so I might pay a visit there. Let's go ahead and check coal. Coal again! We're third! Poland, Lithuania is producing more coal than us. No! These these are the most important resources here, iron and coal. It's basically what fuels your industry. Machine parts, we are the top producer, but we don't really have any factories right now doing anything proper. So let's sort out our factories. We're gonna subsidize all factories, open them as well. We're gonna start building more factories and investing in our economy as much as we can. I love the fact that Austria literally just has two provinces. They don't even have like proper Austria and Salzburg is owned by Carinthia, which also owns owns land shit and they have the same color as Lorraine so it's really hard to even spot the difference here. Also proud of the fact that the northern parts of the Netherlands is a uh, Polish Lithuanian. <laughs> That's so freaking random. Vampire hysteria. Another outbreak of vampire hysteria has occurred in Romanian lands. Superstitious peasants have taken to daubing their necks with garlic in a bid to ward off the nefarious ghouls. So just another regular day in Romania then, right? One thing I really don't like is the fact that we only start with four generals so it's gonna take a very long time before we're actually able to recruit enough generals to man all of our armies right now and are you guys ready for the best feature of Vicky 2 that is correct we're building railroads boys look at this juicy button build a railroad sir we're gonna build railroads in every single province go to the infrastructure map mode hold control and click the buttons we also can build a naval base here for that matter and we're gonna do the same thing control holds button and click on a railroad expansion so we get railroads everywhere around our country wow this fleet is costing us 700 ducats monthly i'm gonna keep the transports and i'm gonna disband every other unit in this fleet because i will eventually replace them with uh, proper ships modern ships for that matter this is just way too expensive for me right now i need to actually get a proper economy going look at that it boosted up to one point something k per day from just disbanding that fleet we also can now allow Allow slavery? Um, no, we're, we're not gonna- Oh my god! 100% of the upper house is reactionary. Well, this explains a lot of stuff right here. Hey kids, it's time for another newspaper read. What's in there today? Well, guess what, boys? The British Empire fears our might. Why, though? We're just fluffy Roman soldiers. That's- that. We're fluffy. We're fluffy, goddammit. I believe it's also time to build some more factories, and let's check what kind of production we have in the- 
capital state of Rome. We're mainly producing fruits and that's it. We are literally only producing fruits in our capital. Are you kidding me? We're only producing fruits? That's useless. All right, time to build factories in another in that case. I will be building factories basically in my um, Italian provinces. Finally, we found one of our states that has iron producing here. Parma, Modena, both producing iron. So let's actually build a steel factory in that province. Remember, whenever you're building factories in your states, you need to make sure you have either coal or iron production there because that's going to increase the amount of steel that those factories produce. I mean, you can build these anywhere, but if you don't have any production bonus from either iron or coal, then you're producing less steel. So what's the point, right? Whoa, Ukraine, you want to be my ally? Whoa, hold up a second. What? UK is justifying on the Blackfoot. Wow. Wow. wow, UK, that is very aggressive of you, sir. All right, well, let's just get our alliance with the Ukrainians here. You know what? I don't mind having a good solid alliance with these guys. I'm also noticing that every province that had a fort in uh, EU4 actually starts with a fort in this game as well. So for future reference, in case I ever do another mega campaign, I'm going to build a fort in every province by the end of the EU4 campaign. We also will be encouraging clerks to pop up all around our Italian parts. The way you rule a nation is by having enough clerks in there, okay? Interesting, the British Empire is at war with Lorraine. Lorraine liberation of Hanoverian Nordheim. Oh, looks like Hanover is in a PU under the uh, English then. No, they're just allied to the English. They're a great power. Let's see the great powers now. So, like I said before, a lot of changes. Scandinavia is up here now. Netherlands and Hanover are here as well, with Hanover actually having quite a bit of industrial output considering everything. I'm curious if Lorraine actually manages to take over Hanover they can even form Germany in that case. If your history teacher asks you who built the first railways in France, make sure you tell him it's uh, Ludi, okay? This is clear historical evidence. Looks like Lorraine actually won the war against Hanover. They got one province from them, the uh, Nordhain province, but still they won the war, so with a little bit of support, I'm confident Lorraine can actually unify Germany. And it started, boys. We started getting our rebels. First rebels are in Sicily for some reason. Um, there's gonna be a lot more rebels. I'm basically getting a lot of bad events. Hey guys, meet the EU4 combat system, but a lot more dumbed down because this game's a little bit older. We also forgot to get a general in this army before attacking, so, um, yeah. Boy, that's embarrassing. Crush them rebels. I feel like I'm fighting Spartacus here, except, you know, with guns. It's legit because I'm the Romans, okay? It makes sense. Just don't think about it too much. So, my plan right now is to increase my sphere over Switzerland and also over all of Africa because that's where all the good resources are. Plus, maybe the Indo-Chinese area too. That's a lot of good resources there also. Can someone explain why there's a nation called Deseret in an area that was not colonized by anyone before? Is this like an event that brings this nation forth or something? And they're also a secondary power. To put that into perspective, Deseret is more important and powerful than Colombia. Think about that, Colombian people. Excuse Excuse me, sir. Ottoman Empire wants an alliance with me. Oh, and they even lost half of their country to Punjab. Right. Okay, you know what? Sure, we'll get an alliance with the Ottoman Empire. They seem like they got a bright future ahead of them, so why not, guys? Why not? Hold on a second here, boys. Ukraine's calling me to war in liberation of Karelia. What? That's Scandinavian land, man. What are you doing here? Ah, uh, okay, I guess I'm at war with Bohemia and Scandinavia now. Oh, whatever am I gonna do? against this nation they're so powerful oh no you know what i'm actually gonna just ignore this war i feel like they can handle this by themselves go ahead boys do your stuff you can you you got this man you got this i'm gonna send you some weapons and i'll let you do it all by yourself all right there you go i'll give you 101,000 per day this is more than enough to also continue our research i'm gonna go with medicine so we actually get some vaccines going because i know people love vaccines right guys and we also can upgrade our railroad system now so let's go ahead and upgrade it first in uh, the Italian peninsula and work our way from there civilizing the world one province at a time am I right this Ukrainian invasion of Scandinavia is reminding me of the Soviet invasion of Finland hopefully it does not have the same outcome alliance offer from Lorraine uh yeah sure you know what I don't mind helping Lorraine form Germany actually let's help them out with their rebels whilst we're at it I'm starting to realize that because I'm such a massive empire my people are very 
very uneducated and that's kind of hurting my uh, research output. I'm pretty far behind with my research output, sadly. I need to get more clerks and I need to get more clergymen. I'm also going to show you guys how you can cheese the market and essentially ruin everybody's experience if you're in a multiplayer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on machine parts. As you can see, it's in massively high demand. So if you have a lot of machine parts produced, you get a lot of money from that. I am the top producer of machine part now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and deselect automatic and make it manual stockpile of 2000 machine parts. Essentially, this means we're going to be paying extra just so we get all the machine parts from the market. And I'm going to do the same for iron and for uh, coal as well as steel because these are the most vital resources that every country needs in order to continue to build factories and to just develop their infrastructure and industry. Oh my freaking God, we have a massive rebellion. What? Uh, all right, we got to get rid of these guys. That's going to take a little bit of time to get rid of them too. I was actually helping uh, killing off the rebels in Lorraine and this happens in my own country now, man. What? It wasn't that hard getting rid of the rebels in my country, but even after I finished that, I still have to fight more rebels in Lorraine. There's peace between Scandinavia and Ukraine now and they didn't take anything. They basically just lost a lot of soldiers for no particular reason on both sides a lot of debt and the only people that made money out of this was the weapon suppliers in the roman empire so i guess i won that war hey <laughs> hey oh my freaking god lorraine are you actually getting rebels again i'm it's not even worth helping you out anymore i'm getting out of here four million jacobin rebels what are these guys' demands? Oh my god, the entirety of the rebel army from uh, Lorraine just came into my land and they're trying to seize land from me, but this is not German, this is Latin, dude. What the hell is happening here? Like, why are you here? <laughs> At least I understand why they have so many rebels. These are pan-Germans, so they're trying to unify Germany and I honestly think they might actually succeed considering there's so many pan-Germans even in Hanover and all over Lorraine. Oh, actually, you know what? We might be able to reinforce this army in time. Look at that, look at that boys, 117,000 we killed and we lost in 9,000. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I don't really get why I just lost 40,000 population in the last 30 days. But hey, whatever man, I'm just gonna increase the taxes now again. That should help the situation. In case you didn't realize, I'm trying to roleplay modern society right there. Looks like it's time for another war. I'm getting cold in again. Ah, uh, sure, man. Second time's a charm, right? That's what they say. Meanwhile, the rebels in Germany are super close to unifying all of this. If we go to the nationality tab, you can see that most of the eastern parts are Sorbian, not German. So they really just need very few provinces in order to form Germany. We are becoming a constitutional monarchy monarchy i'm losing all of my power i don't like this i don't like this so i just realized this is not bohemia here this is poland lithuania which means i actually have to fight against the poles in this war now take note poland is the second great power after me and they have almost the same amount of troops i'm just kidding i have like 10 times more than they have it's not even gonna be a challenge but i'm not gonna commit my entire army obviously we might as well add our own war goal if we are at war with the poles let's go with uh free people and let's give Magdeburg back to Hanover. Oh, snaps. Hanover is offering me an alliance. Yeah, sure, Hanover. I can ally both you and uh, Lorraine. We can all be the triple Entente. Maybe call it the Axis. Looks to me like Poland actually mobilized their nation because they all of a sudden managed to get a ton of units. I'm still not going to mobilize my nation. I don't need to mobilize. And we can also give back the Austrian lands to Austria in this war. And they agreed. Look at this. Hanover is considerably bigger as is good old Austria here. Oh, what? Graz is also... Oh, dude, they have one more province. That's so ugly, border gore. Ew. Holy mother of God. This is like five times more than I actually have soldiers. Wow, I cannot believe this game has such a interesting question. What shall we do with them? They are a part of the empire or... No, no, they're not a part of the empire. Sorry. Oh, come on. What land gets cores on my home city here? Seriously? They get a core 
we're on Galatz. Get the hell out of here, man. We don't even have that many in the city. Stupid mod. Historical accuracy zero, okay? I'm not salty, goddammit. So the world has changed quite a little bit. Basically, the United States completely ate the nation of Alcoquin or whatever the hell they were called. And now the US is the fifth great power. I am supporting the US as far as I can, and we'll try to make sure that they get the entirety of their land. There you go, United States. You have my support. I know, right? Best Scottish accent ever. Well, well, well. Looks like Florida wants us to have an alliance. This is the best alliance I could ever hope for. Florida as my ally means I can take on over the world. So we just got nationalism and imperialism researched, which means that we're gonna start getting cores on all the provinces that we have around the empire, which we don't have cores on. It's already started. We got one on Girona already. I'm also fighting with the British over here to try and get the colonization of Tarfaya before they get it. I'm a little bit ahead of them, but I'm really worried that they might get this. Because if they do get it, then they have access to the entirety of this region afterwards. I'm gonna also replace all of my regular infantry units with the guard units, which are considerably better. So I'm gonna recruit, say, 100,000 guards. Actually, it's 300,000 guards because each unit has 3,000 uh, manpower. Despite not having all of the US, the civil war is still happening, boys. And I find it kind of weird that the state of Ohio is part of the Confederacy. There's got to be some logic behind that, right? I assume. And feels bad, guys, but the British have actually taken Tarfaya from us. Oh boy, my Ottoman ally is literally reduced to one province now. I don't think there's any chance for them anymore, guys. And in the new world, the CSA actually survived. And not only that, but they took land from Natchez Federation, followed by the British snooping in and taking some land themselves, which ended up with this insanely horrible, disgusting border gore of a continent, basically the HRE in the New World. We just discovered that Iraq has oil, uh, I mean weapons of mass destruction, so we have to declare war in the name of the free world. I'm only doing this for their own good. Oh, look at this. The US just declared on the Iroquois Confederacy as well. Operation Oil has been up. Uh, enduring freedom has been secured. Oh my god, Jacobins again. Can Jacob stop sending his minions, please? Okay, this time it's actually a lot of them. Holy snaps. Luckily, I got a lot of troopers, so uh, I'm basically slaughtering all of them. Oh boy, the irony is strong in this run, I tell you. They did manage to get Karelia eventually, and they formed the Russian Empire out of Ukraine. A great day for humanity indeed, boys. We just got oil in the province of Trgoviste. In case you guys didn't know, historically speaking, Romania was the first country to exploit oil. If you fast forward to 2022, we're paying more for oil than countries that do not even produce it. Does that make sense? Remember how at the start of this campaign, we were basically producing one machine goods per day. Now look at this. We're producing 171, 1000 iron, but we are the only producers of oil at the current moment. This will change obviously as more oil wells will be discovered. I think it is time that we'd research the combustion engine, which will eventually lead to automobiles and and aeroplanes. India just appeared by breaking away from Nepal, which is reduced to a one province in Patna now. In the name of the civilized world, I will be signing the Geneva Convention, which prevents me from basically doing atrocities against mankind. I am the good guy in this series, okay? I'm the good guy. Ooh, we can have anarchic bomb throwers now. That's awesome. Remember how we started with 30% literacy rate? Well, guess what? what we have 99.6 percent literacy everybody knows how to read and write in the roman empire this is literally 12 percent higher than the literacy rate of the united states in 2022 not even kidding a little bit late but it seems like the north german federation has formed i kind of have the urge of making this country a little bit bigger because right now it seems pretty small in my opinion also what the schnapps great britain is ruled by the communist party and it's a constitutional republic that is a massive difference from our timeline probably the most important research ever done the bolt action rifle is going to completely change how war is going to happen with all the support they got from us and the military alliance we've actually made the u.s a super strong nation they're on their way to claiming all of their cores as we speak we are also going to help the germans get back the northern part of germany from uh 
the Polish Lithuanians. Slowly but surely, this giant is definitely growing. And Germany is almost catching up to me with the industrial output. Now they're attacking the province of Deseret. By the way, found out what this is. Apparently, this is a Mormon utopia. And bye-bye, Mormons. You're now reintegrated in the greater USA. Cheeky little Tunis actually wanted to break away from me and become independent. Fascism is enabled. Well, we'll make sure that nobody's fascist by the end of our game. And look at the awesome uniforms we have. Essentially, these are the British uniforms from the First World War, or the Allied uniforms, since we researched the last technology of modern divisional structures. Enact women's suffrage. Why would I make women suffer? I don't get this. I'm just fucking with you. Of course, we're gonna enact women's suffrage. We're not barbarians, okay? The first Roman tanks are here. Look how awesome they look, man. It's like how tanks in EU4. I'm gonna make sure we have at least one tank for each of my armies for now. So in the end, we didn't manage to convert the entirety of the nation to Latin. Only 43% of them are Latin, with 25% Gaul, and then the rest of the gank. But at least we tried, okay? Let me know what you think about Vicky2 in general. If you'd like me to do more videos like these in the future, check out this awesome Poland video until the next time. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support.